Oh, do, is this the guy I have the crests for? Do I have these? Oh, I have some of them. I don't have all of them. I don't want to ditch Prim, dude. She's a baller now. In truth. What about this guy? Wonder if some band of travelers would allow me to join them? I don't know. I wonder if some band of travelers would allow you to, to join them. Fuck boy. All right, who next, friends? Who next? Who next? Who next? Who next? Haunted, Ulbrich, Alfin, Therion. Go, go, go. Who next? Three, three, four, four. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. You're not go, go, going. Hot diggity, that's a lot of HP on that. Alfin, all right. We'll do Alfin. I don't know who to give this to. I'll give it to Tressa, I guess. Give her the HP. Wholesome content? True. Alfin is the wholesomest boy. Right, where you at, Alfin? Right here. Where is the inn? Oh, this is the town that's split across three screens. I think. Or is this one just two? No, it's just two. Oh, hey, little kid. I remember you. Emil. A young boy who lives in the town raised by calm and gentle parents. He shares their compassion for the downtrodden and often feeds stray cats and brings flowers to friends who've fallen ill. He's well liked by many due to his boundless kindness. True. What you got for me, Emil? Nate's been acting strange lately. He just sighs all the time. I wonder what happened. Probably he hit puberty. He's sick. Or at least that's what the grown-ups say. They say he can't be cured with medicine. Oh no, what do we do? Uh, I want to be friends with Melanie, but how? Yep, he hit puberty. I wonder what she thinks of me. Uh, it looks like it's getting worse. Yeah. I wish we could find a cure. Do you know what it's called, Daryl? Mm, I think they called it love sickness. Hey, bud. Don't be that way. Boy who was quiet and shy until about a year ago when he met Emil and Daryl. The pair inspired him to become more adventurous and outgoing, and those who haven't seen him in a while could be surely surprised by how much he's changed. Do you know what girls like? I don't know what- I don't know how to help you, kid. Strong and energetic young boy, whose outgoing nature has made him many friends. His willingness to defend others, even at risk to himself, is of constant concern to his father, who scolded him several times for this careless recklessness. Well, didn't one of these ladies have a really good bow or something? Eh. No? I thought one of them did. Oh, it was the, uh, it was the helmet and I already bought it. Here's the bar. Banter. Uh, how relaxing. A fine tavern, wouldn't you say? Indeed. The spirits are excellent and all the better in the company of such lovely women. Excuse me? 
That's not very professional, Professor. It isn't? Oh, forgive me. Tellin' me, Primrose, thou hast danced in taverns afore, yes? That's right. I could not imagine dancing in front of anyone, let alone drunken strangers. Truth be told, I envy thy talent and the joy that thou dost surely feel in. I dare say Primrose brings a lot of joy to her audience as well. By the time she's taken a few steps, she has the entire room under her spell. <laughs> you have a way with words, Professor. Perhaps we could all dance together next time. Uh, oh, to be taught by Primrose, star of the stage, would be an honor indeed. I fear it may not come into me easily. Oh, it's simple enough. You just need to listen to the music and move in time with it. You don't have to be perfect or anything. Just enjoy yourself. Dost thou truly believe in so? Well, I, for one, am game. Nothing ventured, as they say. <laughs> Splendid. May I have this dance? Uh, uh sorry. L like this? And one, and two, and uh, three. Is this right? Gods have mercy. Watching these two is like watching despair in motion. What sayest thou, Primrose? Hm? Oh, uh, well. I know. Let's have another drink. This is a tavern, after all, not a dance hall. I told thee, did I not? Yes, quite. Maybe there's something to be said for sticking with what you know, eh? <laughs> so Cyrus can't sing or dance. Poor bastard. I don't even know what job to put on you, buddy boy. What kind of- what flavor Alpha do we want today? He already uses axes. <laughs> she wasn't mean about it! She was just... not nice about it. What kind of Alphen do I want here? Cleric? Sure. Do I want to save for Daughter's Charity? Or Daughter's Charity or whatever? Sure. I just talked to this guy. Right? Your tale. Alfin, chapter 3. You arrive in Saintsbridge to see a man and an apothecary speaking. Whether this meeting augurs good fortune or ill remains to be seen. Hello? Okay. <laughs> it's like, hello? Game? The story so far, the deadly disease that plagued Goldshore. In the end, it was but the trickery of Vanessa, a depraved quack who enriched herself at her patient's expense. But Alfin put it into her villainy and healed the people out of the kindness of his heart. A deranged quack. Yeah, that's, that's vivid imagery right there. You were always my hero, an unreachable ideal, but heck if I ain't getting closer by the day. Having eased the pain and suffering of one town, Alfin strode into Sainsbridge with newfound confidence. Little did he know what awaited him there. Bum bum bum. <laughs> Me too. Oi, hey, can you spare a scrap of food for a poor soul? As you can see, 
The snicks left me too injured to stand. Show it to me. The wound festers. If it isn't treated, you'll be dead before the next sunrise. What? You're one of them apothecaries, is that it? What's it to you? Bloody hell's put the god smile on me. Treat my wound, and you can name your price. Before that, answer me one thing. Of course, ask me anything. Why is Keanu Reeves voicing this man? Afraid you're out of luck, friend. Your life isn't worth saving. Wait, wait, have some mercy. She can't just leave a man to die. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You're an apothecary, ain't you? How can you leave a man you examine to suffer? And who in the hells are you? Name's Alfin, and despite appearances, I'm a traveling apothecary myself. Fellow druggist, is it? Well, listen up. I'm a free man with the right to choose my patients. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> it means just what I said. Some lives aren't worth saving. This dude sounds like John Wick, I swear. <laughs> He kind of looks Who like him too. Think he is? Whoa, language, Alfin. Language. You're, an too, he said. You're supposed to be wholesome, Alfin. Take it easy. Sure am. And one who doesn't discriminate when it comes to those in need. Let me see that wound. <sighs> Much obliged. You're lucky I showed up when I did. There. That should give you a fighting chance. But you ain't out of the woods yet. You'll need plenty of rest till it heals up. Here, lean on me. When you're not strong. You're Thank you. Uh... <laughs> the name's Alfin. Just doing my job. Thank you. Thanks, Alfin. I'm Miguel. You really saved me. <laughs> Don't mention it. You just rest up now, okay? I'll check in on you later with some vittles. I hear the grapes around these parts make for good eating. <laughs> <laughs> Better for drinking, if you catch my meaning. Hate to break it to you, but not in your condition. We can raise a glass once you're all healed up, though. Deal? Aye. Aye, Alfin. I'd like that. <laughs> now there's a friendly enough guy. Uh-oh. Not reading that one. Oh. Shucks. I ain't eaten yet neither. <laughs> Can't mix medicine on an empty stomach, now can we? Let's go hit the tavern. Hmm. Why, I never... How can he just leave that poor man to die? You could say that again. A man who turns his back on the sick and suffering has no right to call himself an apothecary. If only more people could be like you. You know, we merchants have a saying. When you help a traveler in need, accept no coin in return. Huh? Oh my <laughs> sweet god. Yo, thanks Rodnit. Not even merchants set a price when it comes to helping people in trouble. Well, I'll be. You merchants are more charitable than you lit on. So if you're ever in need, you know where to find me. Heh, <laughs> much appreciated. Thanks, Tressa. We're all wholesome in here. We got we got two wholesome people, a dopey scholar and a a dancer who's was motivated by revenge. <laughs> and now she has, has to find something new. We got half a wholesome party. What's this now? What's all the hubbub? Too much drinking. Hey, what happened here? Someone My son! He just collapsed! I said for help, but... Oh, look at him, he's dying! Let me take a look. 
There's an apothecary in the house. Let me see him at once. What? Truly? Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be a case of food poisoning. But then what could it be? Oh dear. Does your son suffer from any afflictions or ailments, ma'am? No, no. I, n none that I know of. Damn it all. Think, Alfin, think. It's John Wick. I'm coming in. Where's the patient? Oh. Huh? You're that sham from before. You. You again. As for whether or not I'm a sham, you can judge for yourself. I see. Seems to be a paroxysm of sorts. Talus brought on by something he ate. Sweet peas are known to cause this reaction in some people. Here, this should set things right. Whoa. Well, I'll be. Oh. Where am I? Oh. By the gods! Oh my! Timothy, you're all right! Oh, sir, I have not the words to thank you. Just doing my job. It's nothing. Now if you'll excuse me. The name's Ogan, Traveling Apothecary. And I trust you've learned not to judge a man before you know him. Uh. Well, shucks. Never seen a sham as good as that. But I can't let that shake me. All right. All righty. Let's see who else around here is in need. I'm gonna help all of them. Inquire around town for more info. A scholar who keeps a close eye on the local water supply. He does show to ensure that those who live nearby will not again fall prey to a sickness which was once spread via the river. A sickness that claimed his wife years ago. Tidings of elderly friends. Ah, so those two grandmas haven't been around lately. I should check and make sure they're not sick in bed. Sick grandmas. Forty-four percent? Whoa, kid! River Blossom? That's mine! That's nice. A bully who picks on the other children of Sainsbridge, though he seems to take pleasure in playing tricks on others. Deep down, he only wants to be liked by everyone. Well, try not being an asshole, then. It works, trust me. A mercenary who once served a noble house, embroiled on their behalf in a conflict wherein he lost many comrades. He still harbors a grudge against them, but has resolved to carry on with his life nonetheless. Yeah, he was just labeled bully. A snipe saber? Eh. Don't know if that's good. Oops, didn't mean to chat. Ooh, healing great bunches. Can never have too many of those. Alright, where's this hidden item? Why am I scrutinizing when I could just inquire? An old man living out his remaining years in town. He was quite active in his younger days when he trained the townsfolk and his granddaughter in basic self-defense. However, he is no longer physically capable of leading such sessions, which has led him to feel as though he's devoid of purpose. Oh, That's sad. Wait, that was 19,000 for the olive of life. That was not worth it. I thought it said 1900. Nope, 19,000. It's okay. Anything good in here, dude? Hmm. 
Nothing blowing my mind. An elderly widow who lives a quiet life of solitude, never one for social gatherings, she had no one with whom to talk to after her husband died. However, she recently met another older woman while taking a walk, and the two have become good friends. Old woman to the southeast. Thank you. Thank you, dear boy. <laughs> Finally, I can go visit my best friend again. Hooray! Happy old people. You still chilling in here, dude? Yep. Oh, yes. Palms. I need those a lot. They're really good! Should I give her a gift? Yeah, dude. I, I bought this from a bully. Give her this. You're in. I know this flower. This is Melanie's favorite. Why don't you give it to her then? I'm sure she'd be happy to have it. I'll give it a try. Thanks. Uh, Melanie? Yes? I, I got this for you. D do you want it? I heard you like flowers, and I hope you can like me, too. Great job, Nate. Yeah. Dude, what a player. M Melanie? I, I'm sorry, but I can't take this flower from you. You see, I, I like a meal. Oh, M M me? Oh, no, that was supposed to be a secret. I... Hey, Nate. I was surprised, too. What should I say? What's the problem now? You've both done nothing wrong. So cheer up already. We're all friends here, aren't we? You're right, Daryl. We're friends, and I'm gonna help Nate however I can. Thank you. Right now, I'd like to be alone. Sorry. All around me are... <laughs> Poor Nate. I've only ever seen grown-ups with that look on their face. <laughs> Does that... <laughs> Does that mean he's becoming a grown-up too? <laughs> a badge of friendship. Oh, Nate! Nate! Oh, it's not a equipment. Oh, there it is. Grants additional JP. Wow, too bad JP is not that useful. Maybe I'll give it to Alfin for now. An old woman who's lived in this town for many years, a stubborn curmudgeon, she is slow to place her trust in others and even slower to express her feelings. Though grateful to have a dear friend who accepts her for who she is, she'll likely never admit as much. How are you holding up? Thank you. Thank you, dearie. <laughs> Don't mention it, and make sure to keep warm, okay? Aye. I will. Thank heavens, I can finally go grape picking again. Hmm? Grapes? Speaking of grapes, do you know where I could find myself a good bottle of wine? I promised my new friend Miguel we'd share a toast, you see, and... You all right? Is everything all right, ma'am? How can this be? You're friends with Miguel? That rotten, no good thief? Thief? <sighs> you heard me, and that's not all. Rumor even has it he killed a man. I already slipped into one of the local estates, and when the butler found him, Miguel stabbed the poor man to death. The local militia's been searching for him ever since, but. They can't find hide nor hair of him. He's a drifter and a vagrant. 
If you know what's best for you, you'll find yourself a new friend. Well, that's not good news. So we meet again. Sorry, no time to chat. I have a patient waiting. <laughs> Surely you don't mean to save that scoundrel's life. So you knew. I did. He claimed to be a humble farmer. But the dagger concealed beneath his cloak told me otherwise. There was far more blood on him than that from his wound. Nor did his nervous, flickering eyes do him any favors. No, it was clear why he hadn't sought treatment for his wound. Still... Cause someone's a thief, that means you leave them to die? I said it once, and I'll say it again. Some lives are worth saving. Others, not so much. It's pretty harsh, bro. Bollocks! Language, Alfin. not gods. It ain't our place to judge. We have a duty to help anyone who needs us. Am I wrong? Show me one of your tonics. Huh? Why should I do that? Call it curiosity. I want to see your skills for myself. Huh. <laughs> well, if you insist. Here, lookin's free. Lookin's free. It is unrefined, but adequate. Made with talent and confidence. Hear me, Alfin. I can see the passion in your eyes, so I'll not mince words. Let that man die. <laughs> Touching's a hundred leaves. Can't. Right. Look, it's free. Before you act, ask yourself what it truly means to save a man's life. Especially the life of a killer. If you save him, you'll be just like him! Shut up. I should go back and check up on Miguel. Banter. I know that's not what Ogan was saying. I'm being stupid on purpose. What's the matter, Primrose? An apothecary, Ogan. His eyes are just like mine. Are you kidding me? Yours are a hundred times more stunning, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, thank you, but that wasn't quite what I meant. You see, in my work I've met the gaze of many a man. And I've learned their eyes speak more truth than their tongues. You don't say. So, what did Ogan's eyes say to you? That his heart is filled with pain. Oh, Sad boy. 